I really admire and love everything you brought to this performance. The the level of detail to telling these legend legendary stories. I mean, it's it's amazing. What did it mean to you to be able to tell a part of Rita Marley's story? Everything, actually. You know, I'm a I'm a British born Jamaican woman. Um, my parents have uh, come from a really rich history and to be able to represent them in film for the second time, but in the most incredible way with two legends who mean so much to me personally as an artist was amazing. And being able to even, you know, get to know Mrs. Marley in, in the way that I have was, was an honor and getting to play her and have everyone enjoy her story in the way that that they have is um yeah kind of how do you how do you find the middle ground between those things obviously a real person and this this amazing story you you, you try <laughs> is, what, is what you just try um i think that you know if anyone who has a passion for something or admire someone in the world. If you if you meet them or you know you come across them on the street or you come across something on the internet, you just want to geek out. You just want to <laughs> you just want to get really giddy with excitement because it's just amazing that it's even happening. Um, for me, I was just trying to strike the balance between um, the oh my gosh moment and the being you know settled in. I'm here for a reason. And I and I have a job to do, and that job is gonna come with a journey, and that journey was what's gonna find me on the right path to represent this woman in the way that she deserves. Amazing. How does music affect you, especially when I'm sure there's some songs in this you're hearing a number of times, and you're filming some of these scenes. Has any of it stuck with you for for months and weeks later, or, or how did that affect you? Uh, yes, there's there's a memory that's come up just as you asked that question, actually, of um, the day, or maybe even two days, where we were shooting. Uh, there's like a 360 uh, moment montage of all of the live shows across the European tour. And that was the, <laughs> it felt like I was back in the theatre with, you know, wig on, head wrap on, this costume, we do... Exodus, we go off, change the head wrap, change costume, change shoes, come back on, sing Exodus again. And it's like we did it, we did it so many times across maybe I think five, five costumes. Mm. Um, don't quote me on that, but it was a lot of costumes in one go. And it was wild to change such detailed things to represent the different countries, but singing the same song. I'd never done that before. I found it really exciting. Um, it was, you know, like an energy rush for me. And now I have from the learning of Exodus, the live version, to really um, singing the stems from the song. So we had, you know, all of the I3s voices in our heads from rehearsals to hearing and hearing it back. It's like I know every single live moment in that song from those shows. That's so strange that every time I hear Exodus, I think of the live version and I think of my part. I think of Rita Marley's part in the three harmonies, which is wild. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and what an album, like literally one of the greatest albums ever recorded. Yeah. You know, when you're stepping into this role as well, the costumes are phenomenal. Does that obviously put you into the part as well? Or what were they like? Yeah, big time, big time. Um, our costume designer, Anna Shepard, you know, really gave us the the chance to explore what these shapes and colors and patterns were going to be of the 70s, which is one of the best eras for, for costume. It's the best eras for, for fashion to be able to um, express so loudly and so boldly in cinema. I think everything worked on this like really interesting spectrum of color. Everyone had their own identity, but it was of like the same world, which is really hard to do actually. Um, but I, I just really enjoyed recreating all of the live show looks. You know, we, we, we elevated 
these moments in a way that I hadn't been able to do before. I've never played a real person. Um, I've never sang on stage in a film in front of camera before. So there's a little different experiences happening at, at once. Um, but that along with the, the head wraps, which was for me a spiritual experience going into the makeup chair and, and having, you know, that, that experience be my, one of my entries into her every day. That was what kind of felt, okay, the wig is on, the head wrap is on. I feel like ready for the road. <laughs> um, it was, yeah, it was a, it really, a really incredible experience to be able to feel, feel the character in your body before you step onto set. What was Kingsley like to work with as a scene partner? Because you, you both go through some amazing performances together. Mm. Kingsley is hands down one of the best, most professional, beautiful, committed actors, the most researched actors that I've ever worked with in my time. He, he was so Bob that parts of, you know, the shoot, you would have people who knew Bob when he was younger and they would be, you know, greeting him as the general because that's kind of what they would say to Bob when he was younger. They would just be like, yes, general, mm. to Kingsley, who is embodying this man on a daily basis, but is not Bob himself. He was so removed from who he was that he was honoring Bob in his spirit in a very, very different way. And I knew that, you know, I've been a fan of Kingsley for many years and I, I know his work and he's incredible. He's just, this is the performance of a lifetime to be able to witness it firsthand, to be able to be with him on it, for him to inspire me to be more Rita Marley than I had even researched and emotionally prepared for every single day was um, unexpected, but also I'm really grateful for it because he, I think we were able to help each other and support each other in different ways. You're in a relationship together, you know, on screen. So um, it was, yeah, it, he, I've cried describing him before and, and how brilliant and supportive and incredible he is. And um, he deserves every single ounce of greatness that comes from this possible, every single ounce. That's amazing. Well, the last thing I'll ask you quickly is, is an easy one. Do you have the coolest job ever? Because there's no time to die. The Woman King, the Marvels, and I heard that you're doing the Day of the Jackal series. I mean, what does this prepare you for? It feels like you you could do anything tomorrow from these opportunities. Thank you. Yeah, I can. I can do anything. I think they tell us that in school, that you can do anything. And then somewhere along the line, we don't believe that we can. And I think that, you know, I have parents and people in my family and friends of mine that are examples of literally being able to do anything. And that's why I feel so empowered to walk into these different spaces and be a superhero or a real life legend or you know, a member of an army or, you know, a sweet teacher, because they're all things that we're all able to do. I'm just one person that's been able to do it, but we all have the capability and capacity to be able to, capacity to, be able to tap into something that is bigger than ourselves. And I think that um, the fact that I've been able to do it through my work really helps me as a woman and as a human to know that every day when I'm not at work, you know, trying to be something bigger than myself, when I'm just going about town every day that I can still harness that and um, be my best self. And, and that's, that's hard to do, but uh, you know, we all, we all have it in there. We all have it in there. We just need to tap in. Very well said. Well, thank you so much for the time. It's a huge pleasure to chat with you. Thank you. And you have a wonderful day. 